so you've put quite a bit of time into working on working on the press and whatnot. You've got some young guards. You've got some kind of a non-traditional point guard mix. Just how ready are they? You feel like for what they're going to get from Marquette? Um, well, obviously we've played teams that have pressed and everything. I don't think anybody um, is going to press like Marquette. That's you know because they're committed to it. Right. I think other people that do press are just trying to kind of figure it out. And if it helps them in a game or it helps them in a year, they will. Um, I know he didn't press as much when he was at Texas just because he had more size and it's harder to. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, from last year and watching tape and everything, like, you know, he's back to where he's committed to it, even though there's some differences. Um, I think the differences always lie with him, with his personnel and what he thinks is best, whether he zone presses more and man demands more, man demands press at a certain time of the game, things of that. He'll mix in zone, even though they didn't zone much last year, he'll still zone, especially um, if he gets up in a game uh, to mix things up. So you just have to be prepared, um, you know, for everything yeah. and uh, taking care of the basketball and just getting quality shots, just like you would versus any other opponent. You always talk about the importance of seeing different styles and being acclimated mm -hmm. to them. They're kind of smaller and faster, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. that's, that runs counter to maybe some of the things you do. Well, it's not as much as what we do. It's just as much as what we've seen so far. Mm -hmm. So we've played Cincinnati. Um, you know, we've played Milwaukee. You know, you played Austin P. So you, we've played some athletic teams that play fast also that have good quickness and athleticism. So that's what you try to do with your schedule. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, is to just keep preparing yourself for each each game. You know, this, this will be a very difficult game, but... No matter what, it'll definitely prepare us for the next game when we have to play West Virginia. And anytime you play West Virginia, um, you know you know that's going to prepare you, you know, for your following. So that's what you want. You know, you want to keep getting better. You want to keep, you know, getting challenged. But you know, obviously, you got to win some games, you know, in that mix. But I, I think we've done a good job scheduling, leading into this game and leading into our, you know, our exempt tournament afterwards. How much is having David back? More prominent role now. Now that he has a game under his belt, after the yeah, I think it was will help with the process. Yeah, I think it uh, was good for him to get out there and play some minutes. You know, he played 15 minutes, but that's that's really a lot of time for someone who hasn't practiced in a week. But it just kind of shows his, you know, his toughness um, that he's been able to bounce back. He's had two different things happen to him, and he's bounced back in both of them and got out there in that one scrimmage and didn't have a great scrimmage, but. Um, was really banged up, and uh, you know I, I thought he did some good things. Obviously, he made a shot and, um, when we couldn't make a shot, which was which was really good to see. And um, but now I you know we're, we're excited you know excited that he's here and excited that you know he's got some practices underneath his belt for this game. I know that you know you always want to get the best shot you can as quickly as you can, but yeah. when you're attacking in transition, when you're trying to beat a press. Do you want the quick three, or do you want to make sure that your offensive rebounders, who've been really good so far, yeah. have a crack at it? Yeah, you want layups, dunks, and wide open threes. That's what you want. You don't want runners, floaters, and tough twos. But your offensive rebounding's been really good, and that's yeah. Been, that's well, that's been, where they are. So yeah. they're they're down there. They're not breaking the press. Yeah. So like they're always in rebound position at that point. So now just get a quality shot at that time. If you break it, you you know. <laughs> You have an advantage on the break, and so like take that's what you know. Really good pressing teams come from behind and poke at the ball. They they come from behind and challenge shots. Like mm -hmm. you just have to have a sense of where you are and be able to pick up that ball when you dribble. Be able to realize that it's probably not a good shot if some guy's coming close to blocking it from behind you. You know you just have to have that awareness, right. you know, as a player. But that's really the you know the breakdown of what you want to do if you do get into in position where you can break the press and, and you have numbers. You know, you want to take those open ones and get layups and dunks. They'll, they want you to shoot those tough twos. That, that's what they want. Even when you make a couple, they'd prefer you to do that. It's with uh, Waddell. You know, mm -hmm. He's coming off the knee injury, but then he had the setback again. What, what kind of kept him together during that time to deal with another yeah, not not as major as a setback as yeah, the knee, but just another setback. Yeah, just from a mental standpoint, when things like that happen and you're pushing through something and you're hoping to make progress, when you have another setback, it's like you know, here we go again. And so it's really hard to 
you know, to make strides or anything when you, you keep having setbacks like that. But he's done a good job. I think he looks forward to the games more than he does the practices, <laughs> um, to be frank with you. Just because it's very physical, we don't call as many fouls in practice. You get into the game, at least you have some protection. I'm a bad official, so. Um, but no, he does a good job. He knows what he's doing. He pays attention. Um, he's got good length from a defensive standpoint. He can get rebounds. Um, he can pass the basketball. He's aware of what's going on. So um, he's a really good piece of the puzzle. Plus, he probably wouldn't get hit by Mason in a game as opposed to a <laughs> no, he, no, he still can. Yeah. He still can. Have you uh, uh, made any, any decisions with Cam yet, or has he made any decisions? Or is it still no, not yet. We're still waiting. Uh, going back to, to Brian, um, mm -hmm. have you seen him just – I guess just show a little more aggressiveness that game by game. Obviously, you're just two games into the into the season. Uh, I'm not really. Kind of from him. That's just kind of how he you know how he plays. Like he's um, he's a good play runner. So you run plays like he's got a good pace to him in terms of being able to get an angle and turn corners and do different things. Like he has a good sense of where he is. Like the other day, he looked like he was stuck underneath the basket, and he just spun and you know just kind of laid it in. Something you don't see very much. But he's a unique player. He, you know, he's very long. Um, he can handle the basketball. He can pass the basketball. He can shoot it. So, um, but no, he just he just needs confidence more than anything. And it's really hard, like the position that he's in, because he's going to have some games this year where he, you know he plays more. He's going to have some games where he plays less. And it's nothing that you do. It's just, it's just sometimes it gets situational when you've got ten guys that you're trying to play, and, it, and it's really hard. You just got to believe in yourself and stay with it and just keep building confidence.